everyone. I don't know if anybody is going to be joining us today um, from the Joyco page, but if you are, I'm gonna finish out my ginger snap blonde technique on here. Once I'm all done, I will be um, posting befores and afters, formulas, all of that. It's a lot more, hi, hey, what's up? Thanks for joining. So it's gonna be a lot more of a chill environment versus presenting for Joyco. I am doing a reverse ombre, reverse balayage technique on an over blonded model, <laughs> over blonded client. So basically we're adding back in some dimension. It's gonna be a natural coppery gold, gingery color. So I started this on my live with Joyco, just finished that. We're gonna wrap this model up so I can show befores and afters, formulas, all of that jazz. So for those of you interested in the formulas, this is Lumashine Demi Liquid Color. We have a six natural warm beige, a six natural gold, and then a seven natural copper for the base. For the low light formula, we have seven natural warm beige mixed with eight natural gold and eight natural copper. And then in the highlight sections, we have the balayage clay lightener, which I'm about to mix up some more, um, mixed in a one to 1.25 ratio for the highlight. Um, this technique utilizes diagonals, zigzags, um, all of that in order to get a little bit more of a blend, uh, a seamless application. So we don't have to work as hard, basically. You don't see a whole bunch of lines in this. So that's one of the reasons I love using diagonals. You cover a lot more ground quicker. You get the benefits of a vertical highlight or a horizontal highlight in one dough. And then using the zigzags, it diffuses the lines and tricks the eye to be a little bit more natural. So thank you guys for joining me. I just got uh, finished doing my live for Joyco teaching my ginger snap blonde technique. My scale is totally freaking out right now. Okay, ah, no, it's because I have it on top of a towel. So because it's just a few of us, if you guys are interested in any hair related questions, please drop them in the chat. I can actually read them. And we will most definitely get some interruptions coming up soon. I will have to jump off of here. Let's see. I'm gonna jump off of here at 4.30 at the latest, maybe earlier if my toddler freaks out. Okay, so I'm gonna do one scoop. So this is one scoop of the Blonde Life Balayage Clay Lightener. It's seven levels of lift in this. And I am going to mix it with both five volume and um, 20 volume. So we're gonna make like a 10-ish. So we're gonna do 0.5 ounces of the 20 volume. Let's see, cause we're gonna do a little thicker of a formula, that way it stays in the foils. When you're doing foils, I would say it's better to err on the side, or side of having a little bit thicker of a formula because then you don't get foil slipping and bleeding and things like that. So kind of the consistency of frosting, I would say. And I will show you since you're here. Definitely when you're mixing up lightener, you wanna make sure that you are not over mixing. That's something I learned the hard way. So I used to use a whisk because I'm pretty OCD. I was like, ah, it has to be mixed up. I don't wanna see any any little chunks or anything in there, that's gross. And also, uh, it probably doesn't work as well. That's not really good to do with lightener, I've, I've discovered. So you gotta like, take a breath, mix it up slow. It's okay to leave a little bit of chunkies in there, they're gonna break up. Because if you over mix it, what happens is you pump air in there. When you put air in there, you're gonna get expansion. When you get expansion in a foil, you're gonna get bleeding. And we don't want that, that's gross. Because then it looks like zebra stripes on their scalp. Definitely not the look we're going for, maybe for some people. So the consistency is like so, kind of like frosting. Definitely shouldn't be dripping. We are going to continue on the highlights. All I need to finish are the top sections in the front and the crown in the back. 
Once I do that, I'm gonna go in and tone her all over with like a peachy blonde toner. So we are doing a ginger snap blonde technique. And if you are curious about before afters, formulas, all that stuff, I'm gonna fold this a little bit more. Then definitely check out um, Joyco's page. I am a digital edu education specialist for them. So I do Instagram lives, Facebook lives, Zoom trainings, things like that. And so you can find my classes on there. You can find my formula on there from today. Okay, so we're moving into one of the front sections. And I am going to probably make this a little smaller. And on this model, we're doing a, a center part. On the mannequin, her hair just kind of separates out that way. Um, if you are putting in this technique, I would definitely make sure that you're doing it according to where they part it, because you're gonna get the most beautiful blend that way and pops the blonde where you want it. So we did a finer zigzag section. Let's move it a little closer. Thinner sections, a little bit of a zigzag right there. We're doing that around the face and any areas where you see. I'm gonna scoop this blonde piece right out, clip it out of my way. Right after that, I'm going to put in a low light and it's about a medium stitch. So, you know, your typical highlight low light we used to do back in the day all the time. Nowadays, it's a lot of baby lights, so a lot of really fine highlights. This is a medium stitch to maybe a little thicker. I'm gonna pop in my base formula, and that is a six natural warm beige mixed with a six natural gold, a seven natural copper. And that's okay if it touches where the highlights are gonna go in at the base. It's gonna give it a little bit of a root tap or a little bit of a shadow root. I am gonna paint it at a diagonal going down as we go toward the back. And right around the face, I'm gonna be pulling these low lights all the way through. Why do I do that? Highlights look brighter when they have depth around them. And so if you've ever had a blonde, if you do hair, <laughs> some of you I, I think do, um, that feels like they're just not that blonde anymore, they don't have that contrast, that pop, it's because they're too blonde. They need some depth added back or they need depth right by where the highlight is. Okay, so the this is the low light. We are going to clip it right out of the way or just stick it back there. I think it's gonna stay. And then on this section right below the low light, I'm gonna paint the Formula One halfway down. So in the low light uh, foils, there is the base formula at the base, of course, painted down at a diagonal. And then there is the low light formula, which is um, seven natural warm beige, eight natural copper, eight natural gold through here. On some of the low lights, I'm going to be painting them um, all the way down like I did on the one you just saw. Sometimes I will pull them like three quarters of the way down. And then in between, we're just painting in the base formula um, about, I'd say about halfway down um, or so. I probably will give her a trim later. So also consider that sometimes it's good to, to give your um, client a haircut beforehand. It's probably actually the best practice. At least get off some of that um, hair at the bottom that you absolutely know you are not going to keep. Number one, saves time. Number two, saves color. Number three, you have to think about it in terms of placement. So I am going to pop in the highlight that goes right on top of the low light, which reminds me in my live with Joyco that I just completed, the ginger snap blonde technique, I did skip a foil. So I'm gonna have to go back through the side section. There's a foil that I did not paint the blonde all the way through because I ran out and then I ran out of time. Okay, so I am finishing up the top and around the face. Let me find where that little foil is. It's gonna be fun. <laughs> fun in the loosest of terms. Okay, let's move this. There's a low light. 
I'm going to grab this piece because it'll help me lift this out of the way. And I am a solo artist, guys. So I do not have the luxury of having an assistant be my human hair clip. <laughs> so this, it's always fun. Always, always fun in the maxi house. Okay, so here I believe, yes it is. So this is the highlight that I did not paint all the way through. With color and with lightener, saturation is 100%. One of the most important things, if not the most important, you to make sure that you thoroughly saturate your sections. Otherwise, you're just not going to get the results that you're looking for. So if you don't thoroughly saturate um, a highlight, you're not going to get the consistent lift or the amount of lift that you're looking for. So more is more. <laughs> I, I've always been kind of heavy handed with my lightener anyway. If uh, I didn't own my own salon, I'm sure there'd be a lot of uh, a lot of angry talk from the owners about wasting color. But I do feel like it's better to oversaturate than undersaturate. As we say in the business, if you undersaturate, if you're not being consistent with your painting and really saturating your sections, you're going to get holidays. And that's where your color don't gone and took a vacation. So basically you get blotches. So make sure you always saturate your sections really thoroughly. Okay, so now we have this kind of large triangular section. We're gonna start going from a diagonal up to horizontal. So these were all a diagonal. We put some highlights directly on the face or around the face, around the hairline. And now we're gonna start doing bigger zigzags as well. Now that we're not on the um, areas on the hairline or on the parting or right up in the crown. So big zigzag. Oh, that's not as big as I like. Now we're gonna go like that, guys. Folks. And grab some of this. So bigger sections, we're moving more towards um, half inch sections. We're going to start doing some thicker highlights as well. So we're gonna go a little bolder and I'm just gonna probably take out these peaks right here of the zigzag that I just did. So I'm gonna clip this out of the way. This is the highlight. Right below is the remainder of the zigzag section. We're going to do a medium stitch low light. You could also do slices. So if you want bolder, pieces of dimension on your low lights, do slices. I'm just doing a medium kind of weave. I wanted to get a blendy, um, gingery, blonde result. But if you wanted a little bit more contrast, a little bit bolder um, dimension, go for a really thin slices. I like to utilize micro slices quite a bit. And I'll show you what that looks like on the next section. Micro slices are slices you can see through. And they are very close to a baby light. So they're really nice and fine, but you get a little bit more of a bolder result, I feel like. Okay, so this is formula one. This is the base formula, the darker of the two. It's a six natural warm beige, um, a six natural gold, and a seven natural copper. This is my low light formula. I'm gonna paint almost all the way down. I'm gonna leave out just a little bit and you could go all the way too. On some of these, I'm going to be painting the low light all the way down. But a micro slice, as I was saying earlier, is one of the things that I started doing whenever I um, began doing hair, <laughs> when I first became licensed in 2008. Um, it was a way to do a diagonal highlight, do a little micro slice and get a lot of blonde, um, but not look chunky or you know too stripey. Okay, so right below the low light, all we're gonna do is take formula one and we're gonna paint it halfway down. And one of the things um, I always like to consider is where the sun would hit the hair. Oops, look, I got a whoopsie. Be careful, be mindful of where you're painting. But you know what? I have balayage clay lightener. So if I have a little blotch, I can grab a little bit of this. This is the balayage clay lightener mixed with um, five volume developer. I'm just gonna paint right on those guys. Worst comes to worst, later I tip this out with a balayage, but try to be clean and neat. <laughs> Don't do what I just did. It happens, if it happens, 
balayage clay lightener to the rescue. Just pop a little bit of that on there. Or, you know, you can always do a little bit of a tip out. If you have an assistant or you have the time, you know, of course you can wipe it. <laughs> but right now, um, I would like to get this technique done so I can get my afters to everyone who joined me earlier on um, at Joyco's Instagram Live for the ginger blonde or ginger snap blonde technique. Okay, so what I was talking about before I made a, a boo-boo is you want to think about where the sun is going to hit naturally. It's always going to be brighter around the face. It's always going to be brighter, um, you know, along the part where the sun is going to hit it. So I like to angle my, my painted balayage low lights just a little bit further down as we go to the back. So higher up here, further down here. Another thing that I love to use is the angle of my body to help me to do that. So I'll use this as an, as an example. If I were to paint this in with balayage, if I pull this, like to lighten this, if I pull this toward the front of the face, like I'm right in front of her face and I paint it, where, when it moves back to where it naturally sits, it's gonna be darker toward the back and lighter toward the front. So that's another cool thing you can do when doing balayage or if you're doing like a foliage or something like that and you wanna make sure that you're getting that diagonal but you're scared to paint it in freehand, you can always do body positioning. It's not gonna work so much if you wanna to try to get it right up to the scalp with a foil, but if you're painting further down here doing a balayage, foliage, it totally does. Body positioning every time. I think we forget that body positioning is an invaluable aspect of hair all the way around. Body positioning is going to alter the way your curls come out. Um, it's gonna alter the way your color goes in. It's gonna alter your haircut. So don't forget that whenever you are doing a hair coloring technique. Um, I, I almost lost sight of it. We get so bogged down in the details sometimes that we lose sight of, you know, some of the most fundamental things we learned in hair school. So that was something I had to revisit and really think about, like what makes, you know, hair painting in particular, because I do a balayage quite a bit, um, what affects it? And one of those things was body positioning. I was like, well, <laughs> duh. So body positioning affects everything. So always, you know, try to, try to remember hair school, so, <laughs> the basics. So on this one, because it is a bolder highlight, like a, a chunkier highlight, I know no one wants to hear that, but I started doing hair in 2008, so chunky it is. Um, we are gonna leave the blonde not right at the root. And of course, when I paint in, the um, section above it and around it, it's gonna touch that. So it's gonna get kind of that root tap anyway with the base formula. If you have trust issues, go ahead and grab formula one and tap it, it's fine. We're gonna be painting right above it anyway, halfway. You could paint it in the foil too, if you wanna drop it down just a little bit further. I do wanna keep these highlights maybe a quarter of an inch down and then around the face, I wanna to try to get them as close to the hairline as possible. Um, but if you wanted to drop it down further, feel free to paint that in. Just make sure if you're painting in the base color and you're meeting it with a highlight that they kiss, but they don't mix. If they touch all the way, you could create an area of, you know, um, inconsistent lift. So I like them to just like barely meet, barely. So something to think about if you're going to be doing it all in one. I like to just kind of tap it. This also eliminates the need for a, a, a root tap. Okay, so now as we're moving up toward the parting, which is um, center, we're gonna go horizontal. So we're just gonna go horizontal. We're gonna do big zigzags. So this section is gonna be a lot more depth, a lot more bold ribbons of color as opposed to um, finer highlight. So make sure you're getting kind of steep zigzags. You can do even bigger if they want a bolder, like pops of blonde result. I'll do probably one more that's a little bit uh, of a deeper zigzag, a thicker section. And then we're at the very top, we'll do a fine little dainty one. So I'm just going to grab the peaks of this. If you don't like some of the peaks, feel free to do a medium stitch. One of the things I like to do in the top 
it's really weird. So I'll explain it, but I think it always turns out pretty cool. So pretend like you're doing a baby light or a fine weave and then stop, skip, and then do a fine weave again. So basically you're leaving a pretty big gap in the middle, but what does that do? It's gonna give you these bold ribbons. You can also do that with, I like to call it a dash light. I don't know if, if that makes any sense, but when you're, doing, when you're doing a highlight like this, where it is dash, dash, dash. Does that make sense? Like a bigger. So you could also do it like that. You do it in threes, you could do it in twos. Um, but that's something I've been playing with a little bit. I've been really enjoying it. Um, if we don't play in our jobs, we're totally gonna get burned out and bored, or at least I do. So I'm gonna skip that middle section. I'm gonna grab a little bit fine weave from the top. I'm gonna clip this out of my way. And it is still it is still gonna be bold, even though I did the little, the fast weave, because of those steep points. We're gonna go through and we are going to do our low light. And this is Formula One in the Lumishine Demi Liquid Color. And I'm gonna be painting in the base and then I'll be doing the low light melted together in, the, um, in this foil. It's right below where the highlight is. So the last one I did not paint all the way through. So I'm gonna paint this one all the way down. You could of course play with this. You could alternate between doing um, just the base formula all the way down you could just do the, um, do like tap in the base a little bit and then do majority of the low light. So it just really all depends on what you're going for, how much brightness, how much copperiness. I wanted this to be a very wearable, um, natural looking copper blonde with a lot of gold in it. The other thing that I always think about anytime I'm messing around with coppers and blondes is, can I get this out later? <laughs> So I do love to use the uh, Demi Liquids or Demi Creams, and I like to make sure that I'm using them at a level seven-ish or above, because then I can absolutely 100% make sure I get it out later. It isn't going, I'm not gonna be basically shooting myself in the foot, if you know what I mean. How many times have you done a blonde's hair and they say, oh yeah, I want some dimension, and can we do copper? You're like, oh my goodness. I'm so scared right now. Um, and then they decide no, like within one, within like one, one go. So I think sometimes we just need to ease into things. We need to do baby steps and just explain that to them. Be like, hey, I know you want this boldness and you want it to be like very copper. And you're saying you really want a lot of depth and you want it really dark and all that jazz. Can we meet in the middle? Can we compromise, right? And... I promise if you want to come back and you want to go bolder, then let's do it. But I would really hate to over, over saturate your hair with, you know, a bright copper and a whole bunch of dimension. And then you end up being like, okay, uh, no, this is totally not me. Um, now I'm going to be paying you for two corrective colors in a row. Um, I also say, Hey, you know, we can do that. That's good for me. It's more money, but really let's, you know, let's think about this long term. The other thing to consider is, yes, change your life or change your hair, change your life. I've always been like that. I started coloring my hair when I was 12 years old. Um, the first time I cut my hair off to an inch long and bleached it white, platinum, I was 12. So I understand that. And sometimes, well, actually so often, um, oh, holy moly, I'm doing it again. I'm talking. Um, this was supposed to be a highlight. So we're going to do a highlight right on top of that one. Just dismiss dismiss that anyway what i was saying i was getting so worked up about change your hair change your life right i understand that you just you really have to make sure that if your client is open to it kind of see what's going on in their life like is something crazy going on in their life or did they go through a big breakup is there a big change are they just you know they're a new mom you know something like that i always kind of try to get a little bit about their life. And most of the time, if you ask someone about their hair, they'll tell you about their life. So ask about their hair, they'll tell you about their life, get their lifestyle in there in the consultation, um, you know, get in touch with your client. And then that way you'll know like, oh, 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 I see why you wanna go, you know, so copper and so bold and so dark. 
you are having a moment, you know, but don't say that. They might get mad. Depends on the client. Um, and that you might want to talk them off the ledge on that one. Be like, all right, so you've been platinum blonde for like, you know, 15 years now. So let's ease into it. And this is a perfect technique to ease into some more depth, ease into some coppery um, golden hues. So I made another boo-boo and I'm going to make sure that I make the same boo-boo on the other side of putting um, two low lights close together. So we're going to get a little bit of a bolder low light right there, but I'm going to make sure that I get that stitch right here that I was looking for of highlight. Cannot forget the highlights. She still wants to be blonde, guys. She still wants to be blonde. So let's get that in there. And I'm just gabbing you guys, chatting you guys up. Feel free to chat me up in the chat. If I have a second, I will absolutely swing over there and see what's up, answer your question. So this is going to be my highlight. I am going to skip this guy. Oop. Let me grab it. I'm going to skip that guy. We're going to do pretty bold peaks right here. This one I need to go ahead and paint in my base formula so it goes along with the in-between pattern. And I am just going to hand paint this little guy halfway down. Ooh. Now we're going to do the highlight. Try not to grab a bunch of extra hair. And this is with the balayage clay lightener. And I was talking about um, the balayage clay lightener before. As you can tell, I'm walking and talking, but I'm not moving really fast. So sometimes using a lightener that has um, less lift is a little bit better for me. That way, by the time I'm done with the front, I'm not like, oh my goodness, on the back, it's ready. And a lot of times, especially on this blonde, she does not need a lot of lift. So I mixed this with, this time, now that I'm working on the front, a 10 volume, but everywhere else, I mixed up with a five volume because I only wanna pop it up just a little bit. And the Balayage Clay Lightener gets seven levels of lift. I don't need nine levels of lift like I would get from the um, Blonde Life Powder Lightener. I don't even need the seven. So I definitely dropped down my developer and made sure that I was taking into consideration the health of the hair, but also the end result. So we're at the very end here on the top. And because we are doing thicker sections, I think this is gonna be a section, however, Right on the part, what do I wanna do? Do I want it to have you know, some blonde right there? Do I want it to be a low light? And I'm thinking because we're going for some dimension, I'm gonna put a low light here. So I'm gonna go ahead and weave out kind of a finer stitch low light just right on top. Let's go ahead and grab that. And that's what I did finishing out the back here as well. A lot of times whenever I'm going in and adding some dimension, I do want to make sure that I finish with a low light. It'll also help with the um, grow out, having some depth here on the parting if they want that lived in look. Okay, so I'm gonna go in and put in my low light, making sure that I am painting it a little bit further down toward the crown, dropping it down and then not as far down toward the front. So in the front, I might take it an inch, inch and a quarter. Toward the back, I'm gonna take it probably almost halfway down on this little diagonal. And I'm not reapplying color to my brush. I'm just feathering down kind of a drier brush. This is also a really important um, technique to use whenever you're shadow rooting on a client in general, but also on extensions. I don't know if a lot of you guys mess around with extensions, but um, using the LumaShine Demi Liquids is a wonderful thing to do when you're adding in a shadow root or dimension or painted in um, hand-painted lowlights into extensions to make them more believable and more natural for your client. So maybe first at the root, just like I did on this low light, paint in your base color and then don't reapply color, just kind of use a dryer brush or even literally a dry brush and smudge it down. You're gonna get a better, softer, featherier blend. So this is the low light. 
And again, like I said before, during my live, it's okay. If some of that base touches it, it's going to end up there anyway. I am gonna go in here and add a highlight, probably somewhere in the middle. So let's do, let's do a finer zigzag right here. So just a finer stitch, kind of pretend like you're doing a medium stitch weave instead of like that wah, 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 zigzag. I'm gonna clip this out of the way. Lots of clips, lots of clips. And then right below here, let's do another low light. And then we're gonna do our halfway um, paint down after that, below that, and then right above that's where we're gonna do that, Ooh, that highlight. There we go. Making sure to grab these hairs over here. This is part of that section. Okay, so this is gonna be one of my low lights. Thanks for hanging out with me, guys. I needed to wrap this stuff up, so I figured I would take it on over and do some live action on my page, so that way anybody who did join the live can finish out the technique at the top. But it pretty much makes sense. Um, most of the time when we are working with highlights, we do diagonals and work our way up to a horizontal as we get to the top. Better blend, following the shape of the head. Okay, so we're going in with the base color. And we're gonna paint it down just a little bit further toward the back. So I know this is like watching paint dry for some of you that do hair. It's always good to, um, you know, good practice to repeat myself when I'm doing a live. There's a lot of people that join in later, maybe not on my page, you know, my humble page, but whenever I'm doing lives for Joyco, absolutely 100%. There's people that join at all times, hop on, hop off. I am totally one of those people because life happens. And one of the benefits of doing a live is you can kind of pop in, be like, oh yeah, cool, what are they doing? Oh yeah, what's the formula? They let you know, they let you know the technique. You can watch part of it and be like, okay, later when I have some time, I'm going to go check out the stories on, you know, Joyco's page at Joyco or on my page and see what the formula was if I forgot. Okay. So right below that low light, we're going to do the halfway down on this. And that's uh, pretty much exactly what I'm going to do in the crown area to finish off that crown section. So I do like to put the low light right on top just because I want it to, if this was a, a live person, <laughs> grow out a little softer, give them a little bit more of that lived in feel. And the whole point of this dimensional reverse ombre, reverse balayage technique is for it to be, I mean, I know it feels kind of complicated because, okay, you do this zigzag, okay, you clip this up. But it's not really. We're getting so much done in a corrective color all in one technique, all in one go. So instead of, you know, uh, putting in the highlight, going in and putting a shadow root, doing the melt, you know, all these things, we're getting this knocked out in one. So right above the low light, I am going to just grab all of this as a highlight. And I might do the chunky thing again. I really like that. Leaving like a stitch out here and there. So just grabbing whatever I'm like, mm, let's, yeah, let's, let's do a little bolder in the front and then toward the back and maybe a little, little less bold in the center. Play around with um, your patterns. And playing around with the patterns of your highlights is going to be beneficial anyway because it's going to give you um, a little bit more of a diffused look. You can hide lines so much better. You don't see this pattern. Nature isn't very patterny when it comes to hair, or I feel like it's not. That's why a lot of times when you look at beautiful, like young, you know, kiddos hair from the summertime, it's hard to kind of pick out what the pattern is. You're like, okay, well, I know it is lighter around the face, but it's just very um, dimensional, but also so blended. And so, you know, changing up, playing with your patterns is going to mimic nature. And as much as I love bold colors, I mean, you know, my hair is magenta. Um, I also really, really enjoy mimicking nature because it's difficult. Don't we like to test ourselves sometimes, you know? So this one, I did put a foil on top. I don't really want to move that one around too much. 
You can do double foils, you can fold it. I wanna make sure to paint the hair that I left out down and I'm gonna paint it about halfway down. Let's flop this back. There we go. Leaving out some of the tips on the low light, those are gonna be toned later. So this one is also going to be that um, painted halfway down. And then we wrap up that top section. There we go. And again, painting your angle just a little bit further down toward the back. It just looks more natural. You could just, if you were going for a really basic, you didn't have a bunch of time, um, maybe you're not comfortable with painting things down in a diagonal, you could probably just melt it, like paint it halfway down, and then take maybe a lighter blonde color and melt the two together to kind of give you that smudge. Because yeah, it can be scary um, hand painting in a low light. But because we work with diagonals and zigzags, I'm not that worried about it. I think it's gonna be all good. Oop. And definitely don't, don't put color on your client's face if you can help that. Poor girl. Okay, so now we are gonna do the same thing on the other side. Oh, and for those of you that um, didn't join the live earlier, of course there will be befores and afters, formulas, all that jazz, um, whenever we get on to, when I, once I finish this. <laughs> um, but this is the end result. So it is a very natural, gingery, dimensional, um, I would say coppery golden blonde. And this is how this dried. This air dried like this. So after giving it a little love with the LumaShine, you know, having Bond, it has Bond Builder built right into the formula, um, as well as giving it the uh, Joyco Pro Series 1 treatment, it really helped. It really helped that mannequin's hair because this is just air dried. Air dried and no conditioner. So if that doesn't tell you something. So let me finish off this crown because I will probably need to rinse this back section first and then proceed with the, the rest of the top. I'm going to move these out of my way. Always make sure you move your foils out of your way and have plenty of good working space. So just like I finished at the top, um, finer zigzags. So we're gonna do little, little baby zigzags. Pretend like you are doing a, uh, like a weave. And I wanna make this more horizontal. So we're moving more horizontal as we are getting up to the crown area. I'll put this back in. And I am going to try to pin this out of the way. It is okay if some of the base touches the base of this section, but for neatness sake, I'm gonna pull it out of the way. So very, you know, very small section compared to the interior sections. And then definitely I would go with a finer, finer weave, medium to fine. You could do baby lights if you wanted, but I feel like if you do smaller pieces or baby lights, you're gonna lose that dimension. It's gonna be super blendy. So if you want it to be super duper blendy, then do tinier sections. If you want it to be bolder pops of blonde, do micro slices. And those are just slices that you could read a newspaper through. And then if you want some fun variation, change it up. You know, do some medium stitches, do some um, dash lights, do some of that weird technique that I did earlier where it was like fine weave, skip a big section, fine weave. Pretty cool. That way you can just have some interest. Also, it makes you, um, you know, invaluable to your clientele because you are doing couture hair. You know, are you doing the same pattern you learned in hair school or are you stepping it up and continuing education and being 100% couture, adjusting it to what trends are, adjusting it to your client's lifestyle, but ultimately, shh, don't tell, for fun. Why not? I get bored doing hair, so I like to change it up. I don't want to do the same thing all the time. I do like simple sectioning and I do like simple formulations. I don't really like to mix more than three things together unless I need just a, a little bit of an additive or something. But I, I like to change it up as far as my low lights, my highlights. So this is one of the low lights. This is right below the crown. 
So I do want to add in quite a bit of depth. So I'm going to go almost all the way down. I'm going to leave just like little tiny little kisses of hair at the ends. Put this out of my way. And then right below, I am going to paint this halfway down with Formula One, which is the base formulation. A dark blonde slash light brown. It is a spicy, gingery color. We have natural warm beige in there. I love, I love my NWBs. NWBs are just wonderful. Almost every client, every skin tone can wear them. They're just, they have neutral. They have a little bit of warmth in them. They're not too warm. They're not too cold or cool. I love them all the time. And I love to mix them into different formulations such as a copper because sometimes copper is just too much, especially um, considering that this client and in a scenario like this, we're dealing with clients that have been very, very blonde. A lot of times they don't want, oh my goodness, brass or oh my goodness, orange. So if you add that natural warm beige in there, the base is beige. And what is beige? Beige is a little bit of mauve, a little bit of uh, purple is in there, just to make sure we don't go too brassy. And what does purple get rid of? It gets rid of brass, gets rid of yellow. So having a little bit of that, a little bit of something more natural in there, um, in addition to the fact that LumaShine is a pre-blended color and it already looks very natural to begin with. It's just a little extra insurance that we are sticking in the family of a very consumer-friendly, non-fashion shade copper. Oh, I'm getting ahead of myself. Sorry. <laughs> I do that sometimes. Walking and talking, guys. Walking and talking. So that is the highlight. Make sure to get it out of your way. Otherwise, you're going to do like what I did earlier, which is to low light it when you do not intend to. Which I think in this technique, because of all the zigzags, it's going to be pretty light and soft. And normally I would be doing this all in one section. It's just because I started doing them in quarters that I'm having to kind of do this like little tiny highlight. But normally you'd be doing all the way across. Or this is a low light, sorry. See, I'm confusing you guys. Keeping you on your toes. Keeping you honest. Okay, so thank you guys for joining me today. I know you got a lot of cool things to do, but I figured I would finish out my ginger snap lawn technique from earlier. I'm gonna be doing it anyway. I might as well do it with company. So this is Formula One. This is Formula Two. This is the um, low light formula. Sits at about a level seven and a half. And I am painting this guy all the way down. So on my low lights, some of them are gonna be done three quarters of the way down, some of them are gonna be do, done halfway down. Or some of them are do all the way down. Adding in different um, lengths up or down on the highlights or low lights or balayage, whatever you're doing is just gonna make it that much more dimensional. And in my opinion, beautiful. Okay, so this is directly underneath the low light. I'm gonna paint in my base formula. I'm gonna paint it ha about halfway down. And because these are fairly thin sections, I'm not having to split them. Uh, when I was in the thicker sections, sometimes you'll have to split these in half just to really make sure you're getting great saturation, um, plenty of product on the base. And on this, we do want it to be kind of soft and blendy. So I'm not adding additional product. For those of you that are really into makeup, it's similar. So I, <laughs> another little tidbit about me is one of the first ways I was able to pay for my booth rent because back in the day, I worked at a pretty edgy but popular salon. I started as an assistant and then in 2008, I became licensed. And my booth rent in 2013 in Oklahoma City was $165 a week which is pretty steep considering that was in 2008, 15 years ago. Um, there are places here in Norman, I live in a really small college town, where it's that right now. But anyway, one of the ways I paid for my, my uh, booth was to work at Mac. I did makeup. So a lot of um, arts overlap. So doing makeup overlaps with this. 
And what I was getting to is whenever I paint in balayage or I paint in that low light that I was just doing in between, um, I was saying I load the brush, do like begin where you want it to be the boldest, the most deposit of color, and then don't add any more to do the blend to make a little bit more of a smoky um, aspect. So similar with eyeshadow, um, if that helps you to understand doing that with balayage or painting in a low light. Okay, so we're at the very top of the crown and just like the very top of the parting, I am not gonna be adding any more highlight here. I am going to go in, I'm gonna do a medium stitch low light. I'm gonna do that first. And then we're just gonna do our hand painted balayage low light right underneath. But yeah, if you're into other kinds of art, like doing makeup or you know painting in general, it's all related, it's all very similar. So think about it like that loading up the brush, beginning where I want more of the deposit of color, and then not adding any more color to blend, to kind of feather down and be a lighter application. And even in some cases, and I do this with makeup as well, um, have my paint brush or like my loaded up brush, and then have a dry brush that I go in and blend with, or just like this. So this is a lighter color. It is the um, low light color. Sometimes you can take a lighter color on a different brush and blend it out too, which is what I'm doing as well. So I'm gonna tuck out those ends, fold it up, and then right below, I'm gonna do my balayage freehand painted um, shadow root or melt right here. So this is the formula that has six natural warm beige, six natural gold, and then seven natural copper to it. And I am making sure to get the base. You can also, you know, damage control later. I really prefer not to. We're trying to get the corrective color just done in one, in one session and one technique. Um, but you could go back through and do a shadow root if you needed to, if you felt like it wasn't enough depth or to blend out maybe a highlight, you wanna do a root tap. I didn't really need to. I felt like it was because of those diagonals and zigzags and the technique itself and the colors that I chose using a dim eye liquid um, it melted and blended pretty well for me. Okay, let's finish off this last section. Thanks for sticking with me. <laughs> Working with company is awesome. I, I work alone. I am in a studio of one here. So having you guys join me makes it a lot less boring. And I am noting right here where there's a highlight, I see a little bit where it did not get some of the base color. So I'm just gonna go in there and grab it. I think it's because it was kind of hiding behind some of these foils. Okay. As I said during the live, uh, one of my friends and fellow artists uh, said, see something, do something, right? Or see something, say something. And this is see something, do something. You saw it, fix it. Just like with whenever you're doing um, balayage, same thing. So we are gonna go in with large zigzags here. This is where we're going from a diagonal, working our way up to a horizontal. So these are gonna be the big ones. And this is gonna be one of our last kind of thicker ones that is going at a diagonal before we go to the horizontal and make it a little softer. I'm gonna clip this out of the way for neatness sake. And I am going to take pretty much these peaks. And I think I'm gonna do what I did earlier Take some of them, skip, and then take some. It's so like leaving a dash kind of in the middle. We'll see what happens. It's gonna be fun. Change it up. Oh, getting excited, excited again. So I am going to clip that highlight right out of the way. Going to grab a medium stitch kind of low light right on top. Paint that in. And this one, let me think. I will probably do three quarters of the way down, and then the next one I'm gonna pull all the way down. Just for some extra depth, changing it up. Painting in my base color. There we go. All right, so anybody got any good plans for uh, Memorial Day weekend? Is anybody doing anything cool? Y'all wanna know what I'm doing? So my birthday is Memorial Day weekend, BT-dub. 
Um, it is Friday, and usually I don't get to do jack. Um, or if I try to do something, I live in Oklahoma, and it's tornado season. So a lot of times I try to go to the lake or do something fun, and it rains like the Dickens. And, you know, people are busy on my birthday. It's Memorial Day. They're going to go party, right? So what I did this year is I did, in true Lisa style, going to the spa. So I'm going to go to a spa. I'm going to go to Tulsa which is about two hours north of here, and go to the spa. And I'm so lucky this year because in Tulsa, it's not gonna be raining. It's gonna be beautiful and sunny and glorious the entire Memorial Day weekend. And here in Norman, and 30 minutes north of here in Oklahoma City, it is going to rain, rain, rain until Tuesday. So happy birthday to me, I'm getting the hell out of here, and I'm gonna go to Tulsa and go get my spot on and um, enjoy the sun. Probably going to hit up the aquarium. There's a really cool aquarium there. I got kiddos. So we like to, you know, do adventures. And I don't know if any of y'all are from around here. You've been to Oklahoma, been to Tulsa, been to Norman. Um, in Tulsa, there are some really cool things to do. So we visit there quite a bit just because it's two hours away, easy, family friendly. Definitely budget friendly as well. Okay, so that is my dimension between. I'm gonna try not to get color all over that little baby little piece of blonde. But yeah, so in Tulsa they have this super cool, it's like a giant jungle gym outside that's called the Gathering Place. So we take the kids there. It's kind of, the first time you go, it's terrifying. It's like a jungle gym that's multiple stories off the ground. So you're looking up like, oh my God, there my kid goes. Or um, if you have a lot of really bad anxiety like me, you're like, oh my God, <laughs> where'd they go? I don't see them. So one of our best practices for literally going anywhere with kids, but especially going to the gathering place in Tulsa, is to make sure that they wear bright colors. It's easy to find me. I mean, you know, they can find me. There's, you know, maybe a few moms with pink hair or red hair, but generally pretty easy. Um, my hubby is pretty easy to see too. He's a silver fox. So he has beautiful, bright, white, silvery hair. The kiddos, you know, can easily blend in in a sea of children because they have, you know, natural hair, of course. And so we're like, okay, you're going to wear neon pink. You're going to wear, you know, bright green or whatever. That way we can see you easier and it doesn't give mom a heart attack. Okay, so we're on this last little triangular section and I am running out of base formula. So I'm gonna mix up just a little bit of that. And feel free to, to stay along. I'm gonna switch, oh, and I need some lightener too. So I'm gonna mix up a little bit more. So base formula, we'll talk, we'll talk turkey on the exact ratios here. So let me find it. We are going to mix 0.56 NG in the um, demi liquids. I'm going to add in a little bit of clear here. Whoop. There we go. And so I have a little bit more lead time here. Mix in my 6 NG. So 0.56 NG. It's a very delicate procedure here. Trying to make sure I get that 0.5. I hate it when I go over. It makes me very angry. <laughs> I'm a little OCD with that. I'm like, oh, no, not to start over. And then I'm also adding point, 0.5 of the 7 in C. Actually, wait a minute. Let me make sure. I got it written down here. Let's make sure, Lisa. Let's not get excited. Okay, so 0.5, 7 in C, 7 natural copper. Hello, Elizabeth. Thank you for joining. I'm wrapping up my ginger snap blonde technique from my Joyco Live earlier. Normally I would do this just by myself, but I figured, hey, why not do it with some friends and get to know each other a little better? I never ever go live. It's probably because I never ever wear makeup anymore. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, it gives me an excuse to hang out with you lovely people while I look lovely. I'm sure you guys could hang if I wasn't wearing makeup. I just don't love it. So we're also gonna be adding an ounce of six natural warm beige to this. This is the base formula. 
So one ounce, six uh, natural warm beige, 0.5, six natural gold, and then 0.5, seven natural copper. We're gonna mix that equal parts with the Blonde Life coconut oil developer. So two ounces of color, and we're gonna make sure we get two ounces of developer in here. And that's one of the wonderful things I love about working with Lumishine is that it is a one-to-one -one ratio. Goodness me, that saves some time. Because, you know, there's these color lines out there and you'll be working with a permanent and yeah, it's a one-to-one. -one. And then you move to the dim line, it's one-to-two. You're like, wait, I don't remember. And if they don't have it written on the box, like we do, then you could be kind of mixed up, especially when you're like rushed, you're trying to finish up a technique and they're like, oh man, uh, I don't remember. And then you're having to try to go online or maybe you're just trying to guess and then inconsistent results. I really don't like that. Clients probably don't like that either. So this way we have it on the bottle, we have it on the box. It's gonna remind you one to one, one to one. But also you don't have to think about it. Once you've used it for a while, you can just be like, oh yeah, easy. Joyco made it easy for me. Thank you, Joyco. Okay, so I'm gonna be using my balayage clay lightener, which I'm almost out. It's about time to re-up my kit. I try to keep two of everything as far as my lighteners go. Um, sometimes with my cream lightener, I keep uh, three or four of those because I really love my cream lightener for um, compromised hair because it's a little bit more gentle. I think you get 60% less breakage versus using other um, lighteners in, in that scenario. So if you do have weaker hair but you still want to lift them, that's a good choice is the cream lightener, the Blonde Life. Okay, so we did one scoop. We're going to do 1.25 ounces of the Blonde Life Coconut Oil Developer in 20 volume. So I like to do what's calling, called grading my developer. And that simply means that every time I mix it, I mix it stronger, or I mix it faster, I should say. So I go higher on my developer volume every single time I mix it. So today I started with five volume um, because that's sitting on the longest in the back. And I usually do that with a client. And then the next one was 10 volume. So I mix the five and the 20 because I don't have a 10 right now. And then right now we're just finishing this last little baby section. So I'm doing the 20 volume. And for those of you just tuning in, we um, are doing the ginger snap blonde technique. We did zigzag sections that were at a diagonal. And then as we get to the top of the parting, we go to horizontal. There are thicker sections down here and kind of chunkier, you know, weaves. Then as we get to the top, there are finer sections, finer weaves. First formula. Oops. Yep, we're moving at a diagonal. So yeah, the first formula is the 6NWB, 6NG, 7C, and then the second one is um, seven natural warm beige mixed with eight natural copper and eight natural gold. I'm getting a little tangle in here. So this one's probably gonna be the last kind of thick zigzag I do. And then we're gonna finish out the top section probably a little bit more finely so everything that's in the interior that's not sitting on the hairline or sitting on the top of the parting is going to be a little thicker, bolder pieces. All right, so let's clip this out of the way. So we did a zigzag. You can see it's pretty bold. I'm going to angle this a little down so you can see a little bit better. So pretty bold, pretty chunky. Now I am going to take pretty much this whole section here. stuck here there and that is going to be a highlight and like before I think I'm gonna skip out some here let's let's do something weird let's just mm, let's grab this one let's grab a big piece here and kind of space it maybe yeah let's do that change it up and I did mess up somewhere in here so let me think about that I did two low lights in a row. So this one, let's make this a low light. Just for uh, consistency's sake. Uh, you don't, I mean, she parts right in the middle. So we kind of want those guys to mirror one another, you know? 
So we're gonna go in with the base formula. I just mixed it up so it's looking a little brighter versus the original one that had been sitting for a while. Our color doesn't go darker as it sits in the um, Dimashine, Lumashine Demi Liquids, um, but it does appear darker as it sits in the bowl for some time. Um, but the hair should stay pretty much at the level. The only time it's gonna seem darker is if the hair is really, really fine or it's compromised. And that is something as a hairdresser you should already be taking into consideration in your formulation and however long processing time you're gonna do. As I was saying in the live, something to consider whenever you're working with compromised hair and porous hair or any, any of the above, finer hair, is that compromised hair, porous hair, is going to grab the cool tones much more readily, much faster, then it's going to grab the warm tone. So always add back in some gold. Or if you need a little bit more time, um, I would add in gold or clear. Okay, so somewhere in here, I also did another low light. So I'm just gonna grab some random because I don't really remember, which is bad, but I was talking <laughs> and I'm talking and talking and talking. So if it gets monotonous, feel free to mute me. Okay, so we're, <laughs> I'm gonna grab this because I did two low lights in a row somewhere around here, which honestly could probably work out to be pretty rad. Um, we're on kind of the curve of the head where the parietal ridge is. I think that's what that is. Um, so sometimes it is really nice, just like in the crown, to have a little bit more depth in that area because anything that's on top that's blonde is gonna just, it's gonna showcase the blonde more. So hey. My boo-boo turned out to be awesome. Sometimes you gotta look for the little silver lining. Okay, so this is the base formula, painting that down. And the other one, I painted all the way down. So this one, I'm gonna paint either half or three quarters of the way down. Um, toward the back, I'm going to paint it further down than the front. And then once I finish this, I'm gonna hop off of here. Um, I have a men's hair system to do coming up soon. Check on my littles. And then by the time she is all done, I am going to, ooh, I need to add in the low light. Um, I'm gonna add in the 10 natural copper in the Lumashine Demi Liquids and tone her for about 20 minutes on damp hair. And then once I'm all done, definitely check out at Joyco, Joyco's Instagram page. Um, on the stories, there will be befores and afters, formulas, tips, tricks, all the um, information from today's ginger snap blonde technique. Also, I'll be posting it to my stories as well. So if you didn't catch it all, or you just don't remember, you wanna refer back, you can absolutely check that out. I don't know if you can save stories. I assume that you can. So if it is something, a formula, you're like, you know, I kind of want to just like save this, save it. Now we can go back and check it out and be like, oh yeah, now I remember. And then don't forget, I need to paint this one as well. So this is in between where the low lights are, where the highlights are. And I am painting it about, I would say in the back, maybe halfway down, maybe three quarters of the way down. And this is the base formula. So the darkest of the formulas between at a diagonal. And then if you got trust issues, lift it up, check out the underneath, just like you would with balayage. It is a good practice just to kind of check it out, see if you like it, blur a little bit more, paint a little bit more. And by no means do you need to add more product because the Demi Liquids as well as the balayage clay lightener. If I was doing this in a traditional balayage, it spreads really easy. So you don't really need to add more product whenever you're doing a blur. Okay, so I'm gonna grab this and make sure it goes back down where it belongs. And it is kind of nice to work from the top down. So if you did forget, working and painting between from the top down just keeps things a little bit more neat. And I feel like it's easier than to work from, you know, cause you could be clipping things up if you're starting from the bottom, working your way up. Okay, so this is the finishing section on the part line. 
I'm gonna make sure that I first have a pretty medium stitch weave on the top. I wanna have a low light there. And you could definitely do just the melt on this top piece. If you didn't want a lot of blonde on top and you wanted a more ombre, you wanted more highlights in the interior, do you could melt this whole section. But I am going to go in and do a medium stitch weave, paint in a low light, and you can break this up. So if this, this might be a little wide, we'll see. Ah, that should be fine. And it's, it's fine to have some of that base color touch everything else. It's going to end up on the um, base of the highlights anyway a little bit, kind of like a root tap. There we go. And this is the low light. So I'm going to paint this one all the way down. So the base formula is right here. Diagonal it down just a little bit in the crown. It makes sense that hair would be a little bit less uh, light in the crown, you know, as far as the low lights go. And then I'm going to paint in the second formula, the low light formula, which is the mixture of the 8MG, um, 8 natural copper, and then 7 natural warm beige. And I'm going all the way down on that one. I'm going to add some depth into the crown because it's pretty but also because it is low maintenance and it is that lived in natural blonde to have a little bit of depth on the areas where we part and in the crown. Okay, so now we have this whole big section. I am gonna do a little tiny wee or a zigzag in between here. Let's angle this down just a little bit. And I'm gonna put one last little little uh, highlight, and then I'm just gonna do my paint between on everything else. So let's do that weird kind of dash light. So fast weave, skip, fast weave, skip, fast weave. Change it up. And you could also just do a dash, like, you know, so pick it up, drop it, pick it up, drop it. Going with the Balayage Clay Lightener and 20 volume developer. This is one to 1.25 ratio. I want the consistency to be kind of like frosting. And paint it all the way down. And as we're wrapping it up, I just want to thank you guys for spending some time with me. A little less, it's a little less lonely in this Solo studio salon. <laughs> oh, just kidding. I have some loud ass kids in the other room. No, but, but seriously, it is nice to be with fellow stylists. This is the stuff that happens after the lives that you don't see, the time that we put in, and even time before the class. So before the class, a lot of times I will try to do either half or at least one quarter or even test out my formula on the mannequin. Um, just to make sure that I'm giving my people the best experience possible and making sure that I really love the color. But also mannequins, whew, they can surprise you sometimes. But again, thank you guys for hanging out, spending some time. And who knows, maybe I'll make this a habit. <laughs> I doubt it, but I don't know. I'm, I'm coming out of a pretty long you know, personal information, uh, depression and anxiety after the past couple years. And I'm just now sort of feeling like hanging out just now sort of feeling like doing makeup and doing my hair. So I don't know, maybe if I do that more, I'll want to hang out on lives. And if you guys like this, I'll do it again. Okay. So we have our, that was totally supposed to be a highlight. See, I'm talking. Um, I'm going to do this one highlight then. Let's skip this guy out. And we're gonna do right above it the highlight. And I'm gonna take out some of this. Yeah, maybe if you guys like like some of the lives, I'll do some more lives. I was thinking about maybe doing like some of those uh get ready with me ones. 
do some makeup, hang out, do some hair. I think as a professional and talking to a lot of professionals, I, I really take my consumers and my clients for granted as far as teaching them how to do some techniques. Sometimes you just need to sit down and show people how to put in their weave, you know, or show them how to do makeup. So, because a lot of times when I get my clients in my chair, we're talking about that anyway. Talking about, oh, you should do this bronzer. Or, oh, yeah. So, you can style it this way or this way or this way. Uh, maybe that's what I'll do on some of these lives in the future. Or maybe I'll make a few reels. But to me, because I have kiddos and I've got a really full clientele, it's hard to make that time. So, if it doesn't work organically, a lot of times I don't do it. And then, you know, add in depression. Yay! Um, but I feel like I'm not all the way out of it. I think I was kind of born depressed. You know, we have generational trauma in my family, like a lot of people. And then my childhood definitely did not help. And then, you know, my ex definitely did not help on any of that. But guess what is helping? Therapy. <laughs> Therapy, artistry, um, medicine. Treating my body with respect, getting my butt back in the gym, getting my nutrition right. All these things are helping. And I feel a lot more inspired, for sure. I never lost, you know, my passion for doing hair. I think really what I lost was just me, you know. And so after coming out of that and doing a lot of work, I finally feel like being back in the limelight maybe a little bit more. Socializing. I know it seems like I'm very uh, gregarious and an extrovert, but I'm not. <laughs> or at least I haven't been for a very long time. I'm feeling uh, sociable though now. And honestly, I, I think that people do need other people. To be healthy and to be whole, we need, we need a community. I mean, it doesn't just take a village to raise a child. It takes a village to heal a person. And for a person to be whole. And so that was one of the biggest missing pieces of the puzzle um, to heal my trauma and to get out of this depression anxiety was to reach out to my support network. All right. So that's a wrap. Um, definitely my ring light popped off too. It's like telling me, hey, get out of here. Thank you guys so much for joining me today I'm live on my page. Definitely go to at Joyco to see the finished product of the Ginger Snap Blonde technique. Um, there'll be the formula there. There'll probably be before and afters, at least on my stories. There will definitely be afters on um, Joyco's page as well as formulas. Thank you so much. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.